As a casual enjoyer of the Warhammer 40k franchise, the accurate word to describe it would be overwhelming. Was ist denn hier los? If not intimidating. The rulebook for the tabletop game is currently at its 10th edition, with the first one established all the way back in 1987. Just getting to know the lore of the franchise is already a challenge. And God save your soul if you decide to read the Lexicanum by yourself. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get- But this expansive universe is the perfect setting for video games. So many developers have had the chance to make their own Warhammer game. We have some absolute bangers and some less so, but let's ignore them for now. <laughs> Among them, there's a game that in my opinion is perfect for newcomers to the franchise. Warhammer 40k Mechanicus. With top-notch presentation, solid gameplay, and an orgasmic soundtrack, join me as we explore the grimdark world of Warhammer 40k through the lenses of the tech priest from Mars. Let's dive right in. Released in 2018, Mechanicus is a turn-based tactical game. Yep, even someone with a reflex of a dead cat like me can enjoy it. Inspired by the XCOM games, Mechanicus uses a quad-based arena for combat but with a twist. Turn-based games have an infamous, sometimes hilarious, but usually frustrating feature. Hit chance. Many games, with XCOM being the prime example of this, feel incredibly unfair because you can miss a point-blank attack with 95% chance to hit. <laughs> Mechanicus solved this issue by removing that entire mechanic. There's no hit chance. If you can see the enemy, you will hit them. But so do they. This feels way more fair because you don't have to worry about being screwed over by a coin flip. Hey, yo, the pizza here. Oh, penis! <laughs> oh, my ears burn. But that doesn't mean the game will get easier. Here's me getting bodied by a destroyer over and over. The game plays like a chess match. Positioning is extremely important because the line of sight is the difference between life and death. A lot of your actions use cognition points, which is just a fancy name for action points. Cool thing is, there are some upgrades that let you circumvent using cognition point. And some tools require nothing at all. And thank the machine spirit, weapons can come in clutch at the right moment, like this. The game allows you to customize your character to their teeth. As you finish missions, you will get Blackstone to upgrade your tech priest. The upgrades will also increase their equipment load. This dictates which and how many weapon and body mods you could equip on each character. New weapons and technologies will be discovered and become available as you play. But this comes at a cost because to unlock more material for upgrades, you must spend more time exploring the tombs. And the more time you spend in there, more enemies will wake up, making the final showdown much harder. Don't be disheartened though. When you are in a pickle, you can use cantiles. These are practically blessing for Machine Jesus, granting movement speed, damage buff, or a life-changing heal. As you progress further into the game, you will encounter more and tougher enemies. Eventually, you'll fight the high-ranking Necrons, which are exceptionally dangerous bastards. But there's no need to fear for grinding because the difficulty curve is extremely balanced. Before you start a mission, the game will assess your gear and level to determine if a mission is too dangerous for you. The game is fun for both casual and hardcore players of the turn-based genre. Oh, and you will fail the tutorial the first time. That's okay, the game said so itself. You may lose this one battle, but you're fighting a war, so regroup and rethink your strategy. If you barely know anything or nothing at all about Warhammer, we'll quickly go through the involved factions. But if you're already familiar with the lore, you can skip right about here for the story and mission. Okay, so Warhammer 40k. 
40k means we are 40,000 years into the future. Around the 30k mark, the Imperium of Man was founded to rule over most of mankind, so we can deal with extinction threats more effectively. It's a soup of humanity out there. You can't have that. What we have to realize is that we're here to fuck things up for everyone else. I'm with you. Not each other. There are many individual organizations within the Imperium, and the Adeptus Mechanicus, the faction we will be playing as in this game, is one of them. Commonly known as the Tech Priest of Mars, the Adeptus Mechanicus play two main roles. Producing machines for the Imperium's war effort, and searching for lost technology from humanity's golden age. Oh, and they're also a cult that worships the Machine God, aka the Omnissiah. And you will be with all these other great minds and people and no more pain, no more individuality. Just plug this in, there won't be any more pain. Just give yourself to Nirvana, our artificial Nirvana. Just, just, just beam yourself up. The enemies that we encounter in the game are the Necrons. They are a terrifying enemy, without fear or mercy. When they were flesh and blood, they aligned with godlike beings to overcome an ancient enemy. To ensure victory, they surrendered their souls to become fleshless, ever-living warriors. But this process of biotransference robbed all but the ruling classes of their personality and free will. With the war won, they took their revenge and shattered the duplicitous Star Gods. Unable to face their enemy's vengeful servants, the Necrons entered the stasis crypts of their tomb cities, there to sleep out the eons until they could rise again to reclaim their place as the rightful rulers of the galaxy. In short, we're fighting space Egyptians waking up from their beauty nap. The game has a very simple premise. A tech priest disappeared during his expedition. His last signals were from some planet. <laughs> You, playing as the Magos Faustinius, decided to travel there to check it out. Once landed, you realize that you have wandered into one of the tomb planets the Necron used to hibernate in. And the whole thing is waking up in response to your presence. So now you have two choices. Take whatever technology that can be repurposed to serve the Imperium. Or level the whole thing, stopping anything from exiting the planet. Whatever you do, you only have a limited amount of time, so choose your fight carefully. But this doesn't mean the game lacks any humor. There's a mission where you escort a cart to spread incense through the tomb to dispel corruption. But that's not enough. You later go back there and install speakers, so you can blast the Necrons with binaural beats straight from the Omnissiah, because, well, corruption. Hardwired. And as much as the tech priest wanted to leave the humanity behind, you will see very human moments during the discussions between characters. Before I go on a tirade praising this game, allow me to show you its intro. This plays before you even see the menu. From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind claimed your flesh as if it will not decay and fail you. One day the crude biomass that you call the temple will wither, and you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved. For the machine is immortal. I 
I serve the on desire. Man, Warhammer always goes so hard. Mechanicus has very beautiful and stylish graphic. It pushes the blend of religious iconography and sci-fi tech to the absolute limit. From the character sprites, to the main hub of your ship, to the character models, everything forms a coherent vision. Meanwhile, the Necron's design is the complete antithesis to the Adeptus Mechanicus. It's true that both tech priests and Necrons are deeply tied to technology, but the Necrons has a clean, minimalistic design. There is no life to be found in their character models. The caustic green hue signals that anything and everything these beings emit will destroy life as we know it. This design philosophy also bleeds into the levels themselves. You truly feel like you have landed in an alien place when you first deployed your troops. Even though the structure is smooth with a lot of round edges, you can still feel the hostility of the environment wherever you go. And the game has great graphic, even on my low-end rig. But art styles and graphic only play support roles. The true star of this game is the music. But here are some samples because me explaining them won't come close to do them justice. Mechanicus is my first Warhammer 40k video game, and I have to say it's ranked among the best that the turn-based tactical genre can offer. You will build up an impressive arsenal to deal with the increasingly dangerous threats from the Necrons. All the fights take place in beautifully hostile levels with amazing music, and it also serves as the perfect introduction to the Adeptus Mechanicus, their rank and inner workings, to the Imperium of Man and to the 40k universe as a whole. If you haven't tried this game out, I sincerely recommend it. And if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Spank that like button for some New Year good luck and bye!